Hello and welcome to another tutorial on the method of sections. Today we'll solve a truss where there are two different angles to consider and we'll also have a look at finding zero force members. Let's get to it. So this is the truss that we're going to solve. We've got 12 joints here, we've got two supports, a pin support at A and a roller support at B. We've got these three point loads at joints three, four, and five, and we're gonna solve the reactions, find the zero force members, and then find the internal forces in members three, four, so this member here, member four, nine, so this member here, and member nine, 10, this member here. Let's get to it. So the first thing we're gonna do is check if this truss is determinate. If it is determinate, then we can solve this using the method of sections, using only equations of equilibrium. So to do that, we need to figure out what our unknowns are. So our unknowns are the number of members and the number of reactions. So in this case, we've got 21 members and we've got three reactions, and that gives us a total of 24 unknowns. Our knowns are the two equations that we have at each joint, so two times the number of joints. We've got 12 joints, so that is two times 12, which gives us 24. And since these two are equal, this is a determinate truss, and we can solve it using any method that relies only on equations of equilibrium, like the method of joints and the method of sections, which we'll be using today. Now the next thing we've been asked to do is find the reactions and in order to do that we need to swap out these supports for their reaction forces. So here at A I've got a pin support which means I have two reactions, uh, AY here and AX here and at B I've got a roller support which we're going to substitute with one reaction force of BY. Once we know that we can use the equations of equilibrium to find out the reactions. So starting off with the sum of forces in x equals zero, with this being my positive direction, in this case I only have ax, I don't have any external forces or other reactions in the x direction, and that leaves me with ax equals zero. Once I've found that, I can move on to moments around point A, with this being my positive direction. In this case, I've got by creating a positive moment with a distance of 12. And then I've got these forces at joints three, four, and five. I've got 10 at joint five with a distance of eight, creating a negative moment. I've got 20 at joint four with a distance of six, also creating a negative moment. And I've got another 10 at joint three with a distance of four, creating a negative moment. If I sum everything up, I've got 12 by equals 240, and if I divide everything by 12, I will find that by equals 20 kilonewtons. And now all I have to do is the sum of forces in the y direction equals zero, with this being my positive direction, and in this case I've got ay plus by, then minus all these three forces, so minus 10, minus 20, and minus 10 equals zero. So AY works out as 40 minus BY. So that is 40 minus 20, and therefore AY equals 20 kilonewtons as well. And actually, if I look at this structure, I can see that everything is symmetrical. So it makes sense that AY equals BY. And the last thing I'm gonna do at this point is just replace these forces with their values. So I can get rid of AX, I can replace AY with a force of 20, and I can also replace BY with a force of 20. Now that we've found the reactions, we'll move on to the second task that we've been assigned, and that is finding zero force members. This is covered in greater detail elsewhere in my tutorials, but just for now, I will go over this step by step. So if you feel quite confident with zero force members, please move on to the actual method of sections. When looking at zero force members, the way to approach it is to remember that every joint needs to be in equilibrium. 
And out of those equations, we can find those zero force members. Let's start off by looking at joint two. If I look at joint two, I've got these forces, right? Joint two is unloaded. I've got force two, three. I've got force two, eight. And I've got force one, two. Now, what I can see here is that if I were to do sum of forces in y equals zero, the only thing I have here is n to eight. And therefore, in this case, n to eight has to equal zero. And I'm gonna note that on this drawing by just crossing that member out. I don't really know what n one, two and n two, three are, but I do know that they are gonna to have to be equal and opposite. Now, the exact same thing would happen at joint six, so I can immediately tell that force 612 will also be zero. Now the interesting thing here is that once you've figured out one joint, you sometimes find out more things about other joints. And in this case, if we look now at joint eight, it looks something like this. We've got force eight nine, we've got force one eight, and we've got this force coming out of an angle of three eight. But if we look in some kind of local coordinate system, right? So just say an X tag and a Y tag, I can see that we've got exactly the same case as we did before. We've got two members here that are collinear and we've got one member coming out here at some kind of angle. And if I were to do sum of forces in the Y tag direction, I would find out that the two forces, one eight and eight nine, are on the X tag direction, so they are not gonna contribute, but there will be a component of N three eight that is at an angle, and therefore that N three eight has to equal zero as well. And so knowing that, I can also mark this as zero, and because I have exactly a symmetrical picture on the other side, this is also zero. So I can summarize here and say that N 2, 8 equals n, 3, 8 equals n, 6, 12 equals n, 5, 12 equals 0. So now that I've got my reactions and I've found my zero force members, I can move on to using the method of sections. Let's do that. So in this case, actually, us finding those zero force members hasn't impacted because none of these three members that we were tasked with finding is actually a zero force member. Remember, for the method of sections, we can only cut through three non-zero members. So in this case, it's pretty simple because all our members are close to each other. We're gonna make a cut here. Once we make the cut, we need to decide if we're looking at the right-hand side or at the left-hand side. In this case, it's probably easier to look at the left-hand side. I'm gonna look in this case at the left-hand side. And the reason is less forces whatever seems easiest. So I've got N910, I've got N49, and I've got N34. I am assuming that all of these are in tension, and that makes it easier. That means that anything that comes out positive is indeed in tension, and anything that comes out negative is in compression. So it makes my life easier to have a method. The other thing I wanna do before using the method of sections is just finding the angles that I'm dealing with. So I want to find this angle here, I'll call that alpha, and I also want to find this angle here, let's call that beta. Let's do that quickly before we start. So to find alpha, I can see that the angle alpha is the angle when I have a triangle six on three, in this case, tan alpha, equals three divided by six, and I end up with alpha equaling 26.56. If I go to find beta, then I can see that I've got a triangle here of two on two, and I know that because if this here is three meters, and this is a triangle, then and this is six meters, then three on six, that means I've got here two on four, and I've got one on two, okay? Just to maintain that angle. 
So I know that I've got a triangle of two on two. And so in this case, I know that beta equals beta here and beta equals 45 degrees. And now I have everything that I need to quickly solve this. I'm going to start off with taking moments around joint nine. And the reason is I can see that N910 and N49 pass through that joint. They're not going to contribute to moment. And so does this force here of 10, right? All these things pass through the joint. They're not going to contribute. So the only thing that I have contributing to the moment is this force of N34, which I'm looking for, and this reaction force of 20. Okay, so that is an easy place to start. So sum of moments around joint nine equals zero, with this being my positive direction. I've got that reaction force of 20 contributing a negative moment times a distance of four, and I've got N34 contributing a positive moment with a distance of two. That means that two N34 equals 80. And if I divide by two, I get that N34 equals 40 kilonewtons. The next thing that I am going to do, I am going to do the sum of moments around joint four. Now, joint four isn't actually on this bit of structure, but it's where these two forces meet. This is where joint four is. And the reason that I want to do moments around joint four is that N49 and N34 pass through it, therefore not contributing to moment. So the only things that I have contributing to moment will be this unknown force here, this external load, and this reaction force. It means that immediately I'll be able to find N910. Sum of moments around joint four equal zero. When I consider joint four, I've got this force, right, 910 that I'm looking for, which contributes a moment. Now, the way to find the distance really would be to find this perpendicular distance to joint four. However, that would rely on my abilities of geometry. Now, I think that as engineers, we're better off figuring what forces act in the lateral direction, in this case, X, and in the vertical direction, Y. I think the easiest way to do that is to just divide this force, N910, into its components. So I've got this component in the x direction and this component in the y direction. Now, if this is alpha, so that gives me a component of N910 sine alpha in the y direction and a component of N910 cos alpha in the x direction. To sort out the distances, let's just imagine that joint four is somewhere here. Now, when I have a force in the y direction, I need a distance in x. So this is going to be my distance x, which is two meters in this case. When I have a force in the x direction to create a moment, I need a distance in y, which in this case is also two meters. And now that I know all of that, let's go and write out my equation. So my force in y, which is n 910 cos alpha contributes a negative moment with a distance of two. My force in y also contributes a negative moment, n 910 sine alpha, also with a distance of two. I've got that concentrated load of 10, which contributes a positive moment with a distance of two. And I've got that reaction force, negative moment, force of 20, and a distance of six. I can sum that together and I'll get minus N910, two cos alpha plus two sine alpha plus 20 minus 120 equals zero. If I put my alpha into my calculator, I know that's 26.56 degrees. I'll find out that I have minus 2.68 N910 equaling 100. And dividing gives me N910 equals minus 100 
divided by 2.68, which gives me minus 37.26 kilonewtons. And now for the last thing that I need, which is going to be, in this case, sum of forces in the x direction equals zero, with this being my positive direction. And for that, I can see that I've got a component of n910, a component of n49, and n34. So let's start. I've got n910 cos alpha, and then I've got this component of n94. So let's just draw that out. If that's n94, I've got two components, a y component and an x component. I have this angle beta here and here, and so I can tell that my x component is going to be n94 cos beta or sine beta, in this case 45 degrees, so it's the same thing. So let's add that to the mix. So plus n94 cos beta, and as we mentioned, we've also got n 3, 4 equals 0. And I know everything apart from n94. So let's start adding that all together. Here I've got minus 37.26 cos 26.56. I've also got n94 cos 45. And I've got 40 equals 0. So that gives me n94 cos 45 equals 33.33 .33 minus 40, which gives me minus 6.66. And so if I isolate N94 by dividing that minus 6.66 by cos 45, I'll find out that N94 is minus 9.42 kilonewtons. And that's it, I've found all the members. A good idea now would be to check, for example, the forces in the y direction and make sure that they all sum up to zero. And that's it, we've solved a slightly more complicated truss using the method of sections. We've had to break down members into their force components, so looking at cos the angle and sine the angle, but all in all, exactly the same method. Thanks for joining me. I hope you'll join me for more structural engineering. And that's it from me. Bye for now.